Hi skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, hello. Uh, here we are again, um, another men's comparison for you today. Before we get into it, I did just want to like touch base real quick on like gender mm -hmm. in these skis. Um, there was a discussion on social media recently, not on our page, but on another page about men's and women's skis and, and our reviews were cited. Um, something that I often say is Although from the manufacturer, these get the men's yep. title, all of these skis could be skied by a woman, you know, especially like an advanced, yeah. aggressive, really accomplished female skier. Um, a lot of them will gravitate to, to these skis. Yeah. So although we put the men's and women's title on these comparisons, um, keep in mind that, you know, a man can ski a woman's ski, a woman can ski a, a yep. men's ski, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. And a lot of these have the you know the female counterpart to them yeah um which is in and i think they're moving towards the trend of making them the exact same just with a different top sheet so yeah or at least more similar than we've yeah. seen in you know i think i think most manufacturers are getting away from the shrink it and pink it yeah while making the core super light or something like that right um, they're building some pretty awesome women's skis too so just wanted to touch base on that because it was something that came up recently. Um, and then this is, uh, this is an exciting one. This is one that we've never done before that people have been asking for and that Bob and I have personally been pretty excited about. Yep. This is all mountain skis kind of in the mid 80 millimeter range. I think we're ranging from like 82 to 87. 87, yeah. I think is, is the range we're going for here. So pretty cool. Um, and what we did for this is we actually organized it by price. So over manufacturers here, suggested retail price. Actually, uh, map, map. But not what we have listed for. Uh, no, or is it? It is. Okay. Yes, what we have them listed for. So I actually excluded MSRP and went okay. straight to what we would call map or minimum advertised price. Um, so. Yeah, I think it's really cool. There's a huge range in prices up here. We're going to start with a bunch of skis that are $399, move into like the $500 range, and then we end up there pretty high. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll get right into it. Um, Bob, you want to start us off with this Solomon QST85? I would love to, Jeff. Um, really cool ski here. This thing's been around for a couple of years, and, you know, kind of what sets this apart and puts it on the lower end of the price spectrum is that it's not built the same way as the wider QSTs. Um, and we'll see that with that next K2 as well. Uh, but like the QST 92 and 99 have a much different build than this. Mm -hmm. uh, this ends up with just a wood core with basalt and fiberglass in it. And one of the things that sets it apart is it's high positive camber. So how they get the performance to bump up is through that camber and they get really good energy out of this ski. Uh, when you pick it up, you'll notice that it's heavier and that lowering the price um, on the ski like this, because it's a more simple construction versus the 92 and 99 that have more advanced constructions that are achieving similar stability and performance attributes, but at a lighter weight. Right. So when you pick this thing up, it definitely feels a little more substantial and it does have a pretty stiff flex to it. Um, you know, at 8,500 foot, we're kind of pegging it towards that intermediate to advanced skier. Uh, but like I had a blast on this thing. Yeah, you know like one of those surprising skis that sticks out Doesn't get a whole lot of press because it's not you know the QST 92 or 99 flagship more flagship models, but uh, Really just has a good sweet spot uh, very predictable um, Has a semi cap construction, so it's quick, you know, they're able to lighten the swing weight through that semi cap construction um, You know half side wall underfoot, so still really good edge grip but just one of those skis that flies under the radar. Uh, it shouldn't, it's a great ski. If you like that feeling of positive camber, looking for something versatile, uh, this is just a great choice. Yeah, really good mogul ski. Yep. Um, yeah, like like you said, it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's a surprising ski. Yep. I think we, this is something that I think I said in some of our past comparisons is like, skis with just a wood cord are often really, really good. Right. Um, you know, it gives them a, a natural kind of even flex pattern throughout the whole ski. Yeah. It's very intuitive feel. Um, and I think this QST 85 is a great choice. And yeah. like 399, you're, it's a really good value. Yeah, definitely. You know, you're getting a lot of performance even though you're not seeing like the crazy additive materials yeah. like you see in the, in the 92, 99 and up. Um, still a, a really good ski and 
It would be a great all-mountain ski for yeah. a lot of skiers. Yeah, and you won't see it on, like, a magazine cover. Absolutely not. Like, it definitely has, you know, a lot of good positive attributes. Yeah. And, like, you know, very few weaknesses. Even at speed, the thing holds pretty well. Yeah. Mostly because of that basalt that they put in there um, that, you know, makes it a little bit beefier. Yeah. So. No, yeah, definitely. Great ski. Yep. And, like you said, this next ski kind of follows a similar pattern um, this is the KT Mindbender 85. So basically everything that Bob just said kind of holds true to this ski. So while in the wider Mindbender skis we see that carbon spectral braid in the or, 90. Yeah, yeah. or the Titanal Y-beam, um, this doesn't get either of those things. This just uses the K2 Aspen veneer wood core, yeah. um, which is you know pretty darn similar to what we saw in that Solomon. It's just a simple wood core. You know, there is fiberglass and, and stuff like that in there, too. But the, the base of the performance is just coming from a wood core. Um, I do think the Mindbender is a little bit lighter than we saw in the QST. And, you know, along those same lines, I think you're losing a touch of stability in this ski. Mm -hmm. And you're gaining some quickness and some maneuverability. So still a ski that, you know, you and I can get on and enjoy. Like yeah. an advanced expert level skier can enjoy it. But I think it's a pretty darn good choice for a beginner intermediate level skier too. Yeah. Uh, maybe somebody that's been skiing, you know, like an RTM 8.0. Maybe they got an RTM like five years ago or so, like kind of an entry level, yeah. more focused on groomer ski. This would be a good option for somebody that's looking to kind of get into some more off-piste terrain, yeah softer snow conditions. You know, the thing about these, the QST and this ski is they use pretty much all the same shaping concepts as the wider models, the more expensive models. Yep. So you get a lot of the performance benefits, you know, it's like the, the trickle down effect when you've got a bunch of engineers right. building a bunch of like $800 skis with a ton of technology and a ton of like subtle design elements in them. Even if the construction is not trickling down, oftentimes the shape trickles yeah. down into these skis. So you still get a lot of maneuverability, you know, tip and tail rocker. There's some slight early taper. Pretty much everything that we would ever say about a Mindbender ski carries into this. Um, it's just got a simple wood core and it's lightweight and it's a heck of a lot of fun. Right. And then like in comparison to the 90C, which is one of the questions we get asked a lot, you know, that 90C, people will assume it's the higher model, yeah. um, but it does get that carbon spectral braid, which gives it that higher price point. But it doesn't necessarily mean that it's, you know, a stronger ski. Um, you know, this has a, it has a more damp feel than that yeah. 90C. If you're looking for a lighter ski, I think that C is a good choice. Yeah, something that K2 does in like a lot of their construction is they use a lot of fiberglass yep. and a lot of epoxy. Right. And that gives a ski a very damp feel. Yeah. Um, there's a, a bunch of different construction elements that can provide dampness, and that's one of them. You know, there's no metal in this ski, but it still feels right. damp and, and yep. pretty, pretty smooth. Kind of on the opposite side of the damp spectrum would, yeah. be, would be this ski. Uh, this is the Atomic uh, Vantage 86C. Um, again, we're seeing, you know, we have this Vantage line, which is a really, you know, all-encompassing line. Um, everything from wide powder skis to narrower on-trail skis. Um, so the C means that it's got carbon in it and it doesn't have the uh, tit titan titanal mesh. Um, it does have the carbon mesh in yeah. here. So, uh, you know, Atomic uses their ProLite technology here to build this ski. Um, so they're removing material, or rather they're never really putting it into the central portion here in the, sh in the uh, forebody and then through the tail here. These areas are you know, very thin. Um, so they're not putting that material in to purposely lighten the ski, and it puts a little bit more emphasis over the edges of the ski. So uh, still a full vertical sidewall here. The carbon makes this thing extremely light and pretty stiff. Um, this is the 173 here, uh, and just really a nice little ski. 18.2 meters on the turn radius. Um, I was researching this a little bit yesterday and was surprised to see that longer yeah radius for this shape of ski, um, I think that allows you to make more, even the longer radius, more of a straight ski shape and allows you to make those shorter swing turns, yeah. not the short carving slalom turns, right. it's but short, quick. Yeah, yeah. allows for more edge release and more yeah. pivoting. 
Um, and like we could say for a lot of these skis on this wall, this would be a great bump ski, real nice in the trees, you know, 86, it's on the wider end of our spectrum here, um, but just has a nice upscale feel to it, even at that price point. So, um, yeah, we're still on the 399 price here. Right. So, I mean, just a fantastic option for that skier is looking for something light, you know, quick edge to edge, um, longer in the carving turns, that's for sure. Um, but definitely, you know, just a really nice overall ski with some carbon in it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say that as we move from these skis to the, the Vantage 86C, <clears throat> there's a little bit more technology in that yeah. ski. Yep. Um, and I think it, the result in this ski of that added technology is more responsiveness, Yeah. Um, which perhaps, perhaps would require a slightly more advanced skier but still like perfectly perfectly appropriate for an intermediate right um, which i think is kind of the key to to these these skis especially on on this end of the of the wall is is it's important for these to be approachable for intermediate right. skiers and still with that higher end ceiling though it's you know we talk about that totally. a lot and that's a lot that's one of the nice things about a lot of these skis is that they are approachable and accessible to the intermediate level skier but also have that higher end so nice high gear for these skis as yeah. well. And this is quite a bit lighter than the first two skis that we looked yeah. at. Um, so, you know, lightweight and torsionally stiff from that carbon. Yep. So this thing is quite responsive, not quite as damp as those right. first two skis, um, but more responsive, a little quicker. Yep. Um, next ski up is the Vocal Bash 86. Feels fitting that I get the first twin tip spend a lot of time on twin tips, although you do too, Bob. Uh, For different so, reasons. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, so this is another ski, the last ski that kind of hits that $399 price point. Mm -hmm. So $400 for a pair of skis is, is pretty darn cheap these days. Yeah. Uh, but all four of these skis, I think you're getting a lot of value, um, some, some pretty darn good performance. Um, this ski being a twin tip, obviously it's a little bit more focused on kind of freestyle, free ridey all mountain skiing. Um, there is, you know, it, it's a substantial twin tip, unlike, you know, a lot of these skis use tail rocker, but this is really a true twin tip, um, which is kind of evident in the fact that the, the recommended mount point is a lot closer to center. Um, but the Bash 86 is a great ski, so this uses Vocal's multi-layer wood core. Um, Vocal uses multi-layer wood cores in like pretty much all their skis, but pretty simple construction, no crazy additives right. to the ski or anything like that. Um, they do, the way that they build the ski is they're allowing for more flex in the tips and tails. Um, pretty obvious when you hand flex it, you know, you, you can see it with the vertical sidewall underfoot and then kind of tapering the cap construction, the tips and tails. There's tip and tail rocker in this ski as well. Um, and there's kind of two applications for a ski like this. This could be a really fun park ski for a, like, yep just crazy teenager a dedicated park skier yep it could yep. absolutely be a, a dedicated park ski somebody that's not going outside the park really much at all great ski that's pretty much what it was designed for um, but it can also be a really fun all mountain ski you know like a more playful intermediate skier yep there's a lot of benefits to skis like this you know i, I we're going to talk about it with the next ski too um, but there's there's a lot there's a lot to like and a lot to enjoy about a relatively lightweight, kind of soft flexing twin tip. Um, you're not getting like the most edge grip out of this ski, but it can still handle groomers. You know, you can still lay over some carving turns on groomers. I think this is, of course, they don't list the turn radius, but it's not a particularly small turn radius, if I recall. No. Um, so you can still, you know, make some bigger turns, let yeah. the ski run, get get up to some speed. Um, it's still it's a really fun ski. Yep. Snappy, quick, light. I mean, they're, you know, bumps, trees, you know, that kind of all mountain format, I think is really, you know, keyed into that ski. Right. Because you can, you know, take it anywhere you want. Right. And it's not like pigeonholed as a park ski. The side cut dimensions are 120, 86, 110. Right. Vocal does have a full symmetrical, full symmetrical. park ski, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, that's a park ski. Right. Don't buy it for anything else. This is something that you can buy and take yeah. to the moguls and, and have a lot of fun on. Right. Slightly more directional. Yeah, exactly. Slightly more directional. And I'd say this is is going a little bit further, yeah. especially with that classic mount point, slightly more directional. Right. 
so this is a Nordica Soul Rider 87. This ski has been around for a couple years on change for 2021. And just to interrupt you for a second, we get a $100 price increase. Okay, yep. So now we're up into the $4.99 range. Um, you know, they updated the graphics, really cool green highlights here. Um, and so I got one of these two years ago, skied on it like as my regular all mountain ski, loved it in the, you know, tight woods here in Stowe. This is, it's hard to find a better one than this. Um, and then kind of when it got a little bit played out, cause it is just a wood core ski and I'm a big guy. So yep. I'll kind of, you know, go through skis like this after a hundred days. And now I ski with my kids on it and it's like the perfect ski to get, <laughs> ski with kids on right um so 87 underfoot a little bit you know just one millimeter wider than that uh lots of positive camber underfoot on this thing i'm on it right on the classic line um and it works great in an all mountain format um more of a turned up tail this i mean i would say they are pretty darn close to being the same amount of rise in that tip yep. and tail um and as a result you know that flex kind of shows in the tail you know, it's a pretty flexible ski back there, um, but still holds on pretty tight to the end. You know, I was very surprised at how well these things carved, but that positive camber and that snappy wood core under there is really, I mean, that's the main ingredient here. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, what I think about moving from the Bash 86 to the Soul Rider 87 is they use some carbon stringers in that ski, yep. and it's a full length vertical sidewall. Yeah, wall. full sidewall. Um, so, you, it's a more advanced construction, and it's noticeable in the feel. Yeah. Um, like you said, you're impressed by their edge grip. That's something that I've just continually be right. I'm continually fascinated by the amount of edge grip that Nordica puts into their Soul Rider skis, and it's another testament of like how good a ski can be without right. metal. Yep. Um, in this case, there's there is carbon in there, um, but yeah, really good ski, and it, it's very interesting that like both of us own yeah. a pair. And both of us really enjoy them, but what we do with them is drastically Very different. different. Yep. Uh, mine is center mounted. Mine is my 100% dedicated park ski. Yep. In fact, I don't even ski it that much. But on the off chance that I enter a competition, still, that's the ski I use. Or like a lot of you will cringe at this, but if I'm going to go hit like an urban rail or something, <laughs> that's the ski that I use. Um, and it just yeah, it's it's just testament to its versatility. You know, it's mine if i put a picture up of my ski quiver yeah mine is my park ski um, but i still really enjoy skiing it around the rest of the mountain and that's a lot of its value i think is, is it can be a fun playful ski like yeah. for you it's fun with your kids but you can still right rip some turns on it right i can't follow them through the tight woods on my other skis right that i can on these yeah and on the off chance that we're in the park and i hit a jump i do notice that they are much more balanced and much yeah. <laughs> easier to, you know, land land off those jumps than you know stiffer skis with metal. So yeah, you know, even for not a, not a park skier like myself to be on something like this in the air, you can tell a difference and why it's good in that application. Yeah, yeah, really fun ski. I think they they I think the Soul Rider collection it, it's got like a kind of a cult following. Yeah, I think it, it's safe to say that it also gets a little bit overlooked because of the popularity of the Enforcer line. Right. You know, when people think of Nordica skis, they generally think enforcers. But Soul Riders have been around in the same build and the same shape for like five years now. Yeah. And they just keep making them because people like me just keep enjoying skiing. Right. I mean, skiing is fun and those are fun skis. So there's nothing. It's a simple recipe, but yeah. it's, it's proven. Um, and yeah, it's really cool. Uh, next up, I would say this is. If that's a simple recipe, this is a much more complex recipe. Yeah. Um, this is the new Dinastar M Pro 84. So Dinastar has a brand new line of M Pro and M Free skis uh, and M Tour as well. Um, really, really cool. We've talked about the M Pro. I think we had both the 90 and the 99 in two comparisons so far, um, and it's a little bit of that same trickle down effect. You know that. This ski doesn't get all the construction elements as those wider skis, yeah. but like we were saying about a few of the skis that we started with, the shaping concept trickles down and then they kind of tweak the construction to make it more appropriate for what this ski is designed right. for. Um, so probably the most noticeable thing about this ski is the tip shape. 
Um, a lot of rocker up in the tip and quite a lot of early taper as well. I think you get a little bit less in this 84 than, than the 90 and the 99. Like the 90 and the 99 really have, it's like you don't get that right there. Yeah. There's a little bit more of a, a noticeable wide point that's further up the ski in this 84. But there's still a lot of early taper up there. I mean, I think among this wall, it's the most. Uh, but then in the in the tail, less rocker, less early taper. Um, it's designed to kind of hold the turn a little more back there. Um, and I think with this ski, you know, we're still in the 499 price, just like the Soul Rider. But in terms of directional all mountain performance, we've made a step up yeah. from anything else that we've talked about so far. And especially in terms of versatility. Yeah. So if you're like intermediate, approaching advanced, maybe you're a lighter weight advanced gear or a less aggressive advanced gear, and you want something that's fun on groomers, fun in moguls, that you can take like anywhere on the mountain pretty much without feeling out of place or kind of catchy and, yeah. and tw like twitchy, this is a really, really good choice. Yeah. Um, no metal in this ski, so in the, in the water models we get that Titan rocket frame, which is like one of my favorite terms right now. Um, this ski uses Diago fiber. So kind of like, you know, cross hatching fibers like we're seeing a lot of companies use. And that does provide a lot of torsional stiffness and they get a much lighter weight than those those metal M pros. Um, so pretty darn cool ski. I think you could even use this as a touring ski uh, and, and a skin would, would hold pretty darn nicely on that tail too with the little like little swallow tail. Swallow tail. Really sheep. Swallow tail. Exactly. Um, so really good ski, and yeah, you know, lightweight, maneuverable, but still holds a pretty darn yeah. good edge. And this thing is taking the spot of the Legend X84, um, and and for most of the ski, it still holds true with that quickness. And like Jeff was saying, though, from here up, it's a very different ski than that than that older Legend that had that more bulbous. Yeah. Um, bulbous tip with a more five point side cut. This is a much more directional, you know, I'm going to make this shape turn type yeah. of ski versus the Legend, which was a little shorter turn radius. Yeah, kind of pigeonholed into, into one turn yeah. shape, sort of. But really, you know, a nice evolution from that Legend series to this. Yeah, and absolutely. all of them, and, and the 84 as well, very quick. Yeah, and like I think, you know, I, with this category in general, I think, and especially it skis to the left here. Like, don't overlook this just because it's not the 90 or the 99. It's right. still a really, really good ski. Yep. Uh, so next up is the Nordica Navigator 85, second Nordica. So bumping up to 549 here, um, we are seeing our first ski with metal in the construction. Yep. Um, so 85 underfoot. This thing's been around for... Was this Forty, three or four years, years I think now? It's the fourth year. And it's pretty cool that they've not they have not changed the construction of the ski in that time. Yeah. Um, and it kind of carries it like the next generation from the old energy skis. If, yeah. if you guys remember the Nordic energy NRG, skis. NRG. Yeah. yeah. NRG. NRG Y, <laughs> which I really liked as well. Um, and like I have a good friend uh, from college. He's kind of the guy that I used to talk about this ski. Uh, you know, really skilled skier, um, you know, not particularly aggressive anymore, looking for something to cruise, ski with the kids, but still has that skill set. You yeah. know, he can carve a turn. He has a racing background. Yeah. And he loves this thing. Um, you know, and a lot of it has to do with that tail shape. So they've borrowed a couple of different components from the Enforcer line, so more of this blunt nose tip uh, up front, and then more of their Doberman line in the back uh, with a stiffer and, you know, less tapered tail. So yep. a little bit flatter, a little less tapered in the tail. Uh, so that gives it a more, um, you know, racing focus, at least in the finish of the turn. Um, pretty good medium flex, just a really consistent ski from tip to tail. Yep. Uh, they use their titanium hex bridge. So whereas you were saying with that Diago fiber kind of cross hatching it, they're basically doing the same thing with a geometrically cut out um, titanol sheet here, um, which is supposed to give the, the feeling of a full metal sheet, but without the weight. So you end up getting this nice balance of power, strength, stability, and quickness in this ski. Uh, just a real strong carver um, with that good all mountain versatility. But yeah, you know, I, I like bringing my friend up because he's you know, and he's like 5'9", 160 pounds, and he's on this 172, 
and it's just you know I couldn't think of a better ski match for a skier so I always think about him in that regard but yeah no that's really cool and you know I, <clears throat> I think I have footage of uh of a few like pretty darn good skiers testing that which I hope I can drop in I don't think they're on that graphic but still same ski um, and it's it's really cool to see that and what like skiers like that can get it to do yeah. and then your friend and then like further down that spectrum I had I recommended this for my dad yeah um, and my dad's like the type of skier who's been skiing his whole life yeah air quotes um, but he's like I also I don't think my dad will watch this so <laughs> don't take any offense to this dad he's also the type of skier and, and we've had this conversation before that's like arguably never carved a turn before yeah you know what I mean like kind of like skid carving like his whole life and I put him on this ski and he actually got into like some adult group lessons and like all of a sudden he's like He's like 68 yeah. or something, and he's like carving his first turns. I don't think my dad's 68. He'd probably be more mad about that than <laughs> the skiing. Skids turns. <laughs> 60s, high 60s. Yeah. But anyway, it's, it's a great ski. And another yeah. one, you know, to go back to what we said about that Soul Rider, when people think Nordica, they think Enforcers, but these Navigators are really good too. Right. And there's a Navigator 80 too. So if yeah. you're looking for, I think it's $100 less too, which is like crazy really good value because you're still getting like all the same construction yeah. all the same technology all that stuff just a little narrower yeah um, this next ski from Rosnell I think it's a really really good ski to transition to from the navigator because I think they're very similar um, they feel a little bit different but overall everything that we just said about this navigator really holds true to this yeah. like you were talking about your friend you know, he's got a race background, he's a pretty good skier, but doesn't want something, like, crazy aggressive. Right. And he only skis 15, 20 days a year. Right. You know, he's not this 100 days. This goes into that same category, in my opinion. Um, so, wood core, and we get that line control technology that we're pretty much talking about every time we talk about a Rosignol ski now. Yep. It's pretty much in every single one of their skis. Unlike the 88 and now the 92, Instead of using metal, this uses an ABS material as that line control, mm -hmm. which we're seeing that as well in the black ops skis. Some of them use metal, some of them use ABS, some of them use rubber. Yep. Um, and it's pretty interesting the difference, the different performance you get. Um, and remember that these are vertically, vertically laminated sheets. So when you do that with metal, it turns into a pretty stiff ski. Yep. Even though there's not a lot of metal in there, because it's, if you think about like taking a sheet of metal you know, a flat sheet of metal. Imagine how floppy it would be if you just, you know, kept it on a horizontal axis. You know, it's not, metal's not stiff when it's that thin, but then tip it up vertically and try and bend it right. along the, the vertical axis, and it's like, you can't. Right. So when you think about what's in these line control skis, the ones with metal can be pretty demanding, but this, you, by using an ABS material, it's a little bit smoother while still providing, you know, the, the stability, the, the edge, you know, the edge control, just like all the benefits of line control yeah. technology. It's just a little bit smoother and a little bit more forgiving. And I think that's really important for this ski because I think this ski is, is a really good, you know, it's a good ski for somebody like your friend that we were just talking about. I'd put my dad on it. I'd put like a progressing intermediate on this ski as well. There's a wide range of people that can enjoy this ski. Yeah. Another one that like I have fun when I get on and ski. You know, I would love to own something like this for days that I just want to go out and like ski with a wide range of different ability levels and just have fun skiing mm -hmm. uh, without worrying about like being the fastest or the going the biggest or anything like that. It's a really really good ski, um, and I think Rosignol, you know, the experience line's been around for a while. This width has been around for a while. These new, this new version's easily the best they've ever done. Yeah. You, know, you get a lot of versatility out of the tip shape, very similar to what we said about that Navigator. And like the other experienced skis, we're seeing a shorter relative turn radius. Yeah. Uh, I think this one's a 15 in a 176. So that's like yeah, bordering on I'm pretty sure you're right. I'll put it up. I'll, I'll flash a graphic yeah. up. Um, but yeah, they are. They do get shorter turn. Oh yeah, fifteen. Fifteen. I so like, it. you know, that in a one seventy six, that's pretty short. So you're going to be making some clean round turns. I remember uh, testing this and a Kessley MX eighty four back to back. 
Yeah. And thinking, wow, this is a very similar overall feel to that Kessley yep. in terms of the roundness of the turn shape and the energy out of the turn. And for comparison, this is 15.5. Okay. So we're, you know, we're in the same, same boat here. Yeah. Um, and obviously we're looking at a less expensive ski than the Kessley. What is this one you have down here? It's, I, think uh, we I think we just moved up five to 599. Yeah. So we had a $50 price jump from the, the Navigator yeah. into the, the Experience. So, you know, definitely has that higher end feel to it. Yeah. Um, which I was really impressed, you know, especially when you get on something like that Kessley and then, you know, comparing it to that. Yeah. Is, uh, it's a pretty interesting comparison. And a good mobile ski as well. Yep. Which, like, I hope I don't sound like a broken record because literally everything we've talked right. about so far is a good mogul ski. Well, we get a lot of questions about that. Let's yep. put in the bumps. And, yep. you know, this is, this is a good, this is a a good range this for This is it. kind of the bump category yeah. until we end things down there, and then it turns into a slightly different conversation. Yeah. Um, also a little stiff for the bumps, but still the right shape. Depends on your ability. It yeah. can be a really good bump ski. Uh, this is a Blizzard Brahma 82, and I kind of personally wish that more companies would take this approach in their kind of main free ride skis and going down one more width. Yeah. You know, no, that's, I, that's my personal wish. Yeah, they're um, kind of the first to do it, sort of. Yeah. You know, so you, you're not seeing, uh, you know, an Enforcer 82. You're not seeing, like, a Kendo 82. Yep. Um, you know, we'll get to this Kanjo. It's just not quite the same thing. Um, this bar, this is, you know, a twin construction from the Brahma of last year. Yep. Uh, this does not get the uh, true, true blend, blend uh, the new core construction that's found in the Brahma 88 and the uh, Bonafide 97. Um, so this is the, the same, you know, wood core, stiff wood core, two sheets of metal, um, and as the Brahma of old, um, really just a nice solid ski right here yeah um, you know it's incredibly stiff and stable and damp um, you know uses that you know rocker profile that's you know a little flatter than most um, pretty flat tail just really really subtle in the rocker I mean it's you know minuscule but it is there um, and then just you know pretty minimal taper in the front really meant for that directional on trail skiing um, you know, really quick edge to edge and just incredibly stable and solid. So Yeah, really, I mean, just hands down the most powerful ski yep. that we've talked about so far and a really, really good choice. If like, even like, we almost could have put it in the front side comparison. Right. You know, it's it's pretty darn close to like that Nordica Doberman Spitfire 80. Right. In the sense that they're two millimeters apart yeah. in, in waist width and they both use two sheets of metal. This shape is a little bit more versatile. And so the I think, rocker is very different. The rocker is pretty different too. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you get, it, it's you still get like really high levels yeah. of carving performance, a powerful, aggressive, on-trail feel, but a, a little bit more versatility. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, mount it with a, there's no system binding on here. You know, it like, I think you could draw a lot of comparisons to the, the Disruption 82 there, yep. just in terms of how powerful they are and, and their waist width, but by not having a binding plate, you know, it's a flat ski, lower center of gravity, you're going to have more balance, yep. um, and it, it just makes it that much better in moguls, and when the snow gets a little chunky and variable, right. um, the Brahma's, Brahma 82 is really good. I know a lot of our customers, or a lot of our followers and audience have ended up with this ski yeah. and have been really, really happy with it. Yeah, and it's not just a good, like, that one ski that you could use, but this is a great complementary ski if you are if you already have that hundred or more yeah. um, <clears throat> ski, this would be that, that front side counterpart to that. Yeah. It still has that more free ride build to it. Yeah, really, really cool ski. I actually really like the new blue graphic, too. Yeah, it, they, it fits. They did a really good job. Uh, next up is the Vocal Kanjo 84. And when you pick that up after the... Oh yeah, quite a bit, the quite Brahma, a bit different. Quite a bit different. Um, and you know, if you go back to Bob's favorite thing, Ski Phonics, that just is unbelievably damp sounding, where this is a little, a little more pingy. Yeah. Um, basically because of its build. This right. is a little lighter. You know, you don't get two sheets of metal in this ski. You do get a little bit of metal underfoot. 
Um, and I'll say before I like dive too deep into the ski is the Kanjo has been around for a few years now, but this is a new version of the Kanjo. And basically what they've done is they've taken the Titanal frame that we're going to talk about in the Deacon 84 down there, you know, same thing that we saw in the M5 Mantra, Kendo 88, a lot of their skis yeah. now. Um, but in this, it's glass. So same thing, you know, you get this frame along the edges and the forebody of the ski, same thing in the tail. But instead of metal in that spot, they're using basically extra fiberglass. So you're getting, you know, if you <clears throat> go back to the previous version of the Kendo <clears throat> or the Kanjo where they used metal along the middle, yep. that tightenal band, um, this is providing a little bit more edge grip, a little yep. bit more stable feel when you've, when you've got a high edge angle and you're carving a turn. You know, I think that can, the previous Kanjo was still pretty darn good at carving, yeah. um, but this is a little bit better and they tweak the shape a little bit too so you get slightly longer effective edge. Um, so it increased its carving ability, but still retained what I loved about that old Kendo. Like I, it was like three years ago or four years ago that we tested that ski for the first time, but I have like vivid memories of that ski day and I just had so much fun yeah. seeing that Kendo. It's Kanjo. Kanjo, I keep saying Kendo. I know, it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> Anyways, um, they're light on your feet, you know, they're snappy, yeah. they're, they're energetic, they're super quick, but then they're still pretty darn strong too. I think there's probably a benefit to me being like 150 pounds. It's like I'm not, I'm not asking too much of the ski. I don't know if you get on the Kanjo 84 and don't find the same stability, yeah. but a lighter weight skier like myself is, is going to have a blast on this ski because it's got all the edge grip that somebody like me could need, yeah. but then it's like super quick and agile and, and really fun in moguls. Like I, I, I really like this ski. Um, and I think they did a really good job with the new version, kind of bringing in some of the construction elements from their other skis. Um, but it's not like dumbed down. No, not at all. Like it makes more, s it makes sense. I mean, you know? they used the glass frame in the, I think the Deacon 80 is a, yeah. almost a more fair comparison because that uses the glass frame, but in a more on-trail shape. Yeah. You know, this is a very similar build, but in, a, in that more all-mountain shape. Right. Um, and, you know, like... Vocal's got what, three skis within two millimeters of each other right. just on this wall, and I think most notably that Deacon 84 is the same width. That's got more on-trail strength, more like high-speed right. carving performance. This is more agile and more playful. Yep. So it, it's really nice that they give you two, two options in the 84 waist width or the mid-80 category, right. and they, they, do, they have their own benefits and, and purposes. Yep which is great. Yeah, and this is, I think that this frame build works better for this width than that band. Yeah. You know, and it was interesting because they used that Titano band technology on the 115 millimeter confession. Yeah. So it just didn't quite make sense that they're using the same build on an 84 as a 115. Right. Um, and I think that this is better for, you know, because this is going to be on trail more. Right. And that's where the frame is a little bit better. Right. This is the Headcore 87, um, and uh, this is a new ski for adults this year. Uh, their 87 was kind of their tweener ski last year, and they've uh, brought it into the adult version. Um, and same build as the rest of the cores, just in that narrower shape. Um, they also have made it more on-trail appropriate in terms of the taper and the rocker, so that you know, it's not as rockered as the wider skis. Certainly more useful um, on the groomers. Uh, wood core with graphene, choroid, and carbon in it, like we see with the other cores. And these things are just in impossibly stiff and light for, for what they are. Yeah. Um, incredibly quick and, you know, just a great carving ski. Like, I'm pretty psyched to get on these this year and, you know, see what they can do around here. I think this is just a great East Coast all mountain ski, you know, for yeah. a, a wide variety of skiers. Yeah, I mean, it's that same core recipe, yep. but it's just, it's obviously, right. it's the quickest edge to edge, uh, which has a couple benefits, that groomer benefit, and then I also think it's the best core in moguls. Yep. You know, again, not to sound like a broken record, but like that shape specifically, 
and the fact that it's relatively lightweight and pretty stiff and supportive too, mm -hmm. it just all adds up to a really, really good mobile yeah. ski. And yeah, I think it, it's a fantastic East Coast ski. Yeah. You know, for somebody, maybe like, maybe here in Stowe we get a little too much snow for it to be like a daily driver, but I could see, like I grew up in Maine where they get like a hundred less inches mm -hmm. per year be like a really good sugarloaf ski right it's got all the edge grip you need for like ripping down narrow gauge and then you could just go play around and bumps on bubble cuffer and all that kind of <laughs> stuff that brings back memories right one of the best trail names ever um but yeah i think it, it's a really good ski i i am excited to see like you were kind of saying about this this brahma 82 i'm excited to see the core construction and yeah. and style trickle down into a narrower ski right uh, you know, and, and that almost leaves room for like the Core 82, you know, right. it's like that's kind of uh, where I would like to see things go. Um, you know, it's late October now, so we don't really have a good idea on that on that next year's stuff quite yet. But uh, definitely seems like they're trying to take, you know, a proven build and play around with shape, which yep. is great. And uh, just a quick note on price, we've, we've moved into a, a 649 category, starting with, I'll check my notes. Starting with that Core 87, is we're, we're now in a six six forty nine category. What was um, the Kanjo? Kanjo's still in that in that five ninety nine range. So we were we were sticking in five ninety nine for three skis there from Experience eighty four through Kanjo eighty four. Yeah. Um, which which kind of makes sense, and it's three really interesting skis to share a price point, and three quite different yeah feels and, and different applications. Um, so next up is the Elan Wingman 86 CTI, still in the 649 price point range. Um, this is a great ski. I really like these skis. I really like pretty much what Elan is doing across the board right now. I think their Amphibio technology is pretty cool, yeah. and it, it definitely works. You know, it is. Some people don't like the idea of having a right and left ski and like a little bit more to think about, but it 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 does work. Um, they're pretty darn cool. Um, I would put this ski right up with the most powerful carving skis on the wall. Maybe that 86 GT, that RC1, is like a little bit more just burly throughout. Uh, maybe the Brahma 82 is as well. But this is a really, really, really strong carving yeah. ski. Um, the, so that Amphibio technology, they're using more camber along the inside edge more rocker along the outside edge. So let's talk about the inside edge because that's kind of the important thing right. with these skis. You get a, a really interestingly shaped sheet of metal along the inside edge. It's full width underfoot and then kind of tapers to this portion right here and then juts out in a little triangle right there in the tip um, and then fairly same thing in the, in the tail without that extra triangle. So basically when you're on edge, you know, when you're in a carving turn with a high edge angle, you can really stand on that outside yeah. ski. You know, you, you can give that outside ski as much of your weight and your power and, and pressure as you want. You're not gonna wash out at all. These things hold really, really well. Um, now because they just use that metal along the inside edge, they're a little bit lighter. Yeah. You know, lighter than like the Brahma 82 is narrower, but say if we had a Brahma 88 on this wall, which is closer to this in width, this is quite a bit lighter, yeah. which I think gives it a little bit more versatility along with that Amphibio technology. You know, I, um, I remember watching Marcus and I think it was, uh, I think it was actually the Elan sales rep or maybe it was their marketing manager, whoever it was, they were on these and they came through that Tombus shoot at Stowe and when they came around the corner, I was thinking like, oh, that might be tough on those skis, but the, it worked like really, really well. Yeah. And that's, you know, like fairly demanding. It's usually like just a narrow shoot of ice, um, but these things did really well in that terrain. So you get high level, high levels of carving performance, really, really strong edge grip, nice responsive energetic feel when you're linking carving turns, but you get like a touch more versatility yeah. out of these these Wingman 86 CTIs. Um, and at first, like, I don't know when I, when I had this thought at first, but I was kind of like, kind of in this mindset of it didn't make sense for them to have this and a Ripstick 88, but then after skiing this more, it 
does make sense because right. this is stronger as a carving ski. So if you're if you like Alon's story right now, so to speak, but you're more of an on trail skier, the the Wingman eighty six is is the way to go. Yeah, it's a fantastic ski. This is one of the fastest skis I've been on. I remember testing this and going down nosedive and you know starting to link turns and you know it must have had some nice wax on it too because it was yeah. just like the thing just glided and the faster you went it stayed the same stability it yeah. was very impressive um, and you had mentioned the inside edge and you know it's fair to mention the outside edge too which doesn't have that material on it you don't normally think about that uphill edge right. tipping in but it's that's kind of easier compliance right and it's kind of a you know an interesting uh, offshoot of that downhill performance is you're not thinking about the uphill ski um, but if you're on a more twitchy on-trail ski you can definitely feel it twitching yeah um, this eliminates that by having that rockered inside edge and the less material there so you know it kind of it eliminates that thought it's just a very natural feeling to it and we see it in the, in the ripstick line as well on the soft snow and so Stan Street's and it works uh, on the hard snow as well yeah. so uh, yeah, like you said, just really impressive ski. Um, this comes flat and system, I believe. Yeah, it is available as a system. Yeah. <clears throat> I think, I don't know, it's probably just me, but I see a lot more benefits to it as a flat ski. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting one that has that, that is, you know, built like that system on trail ski, but comes flat. So it's yeah. kind of an anomaly in this category, which is pretty nice. Yeah, and, uh, you know, doesn't use full sheets of metal. Um, but they, they have those carbon tubes in that ski, yep. too, which we've talked about a lot in other comparisons and, and the vibration damping that they provide. So even though you're not getting, like, two full sheets of metal, like a yeah. ski like this, it's still really, really smooth and, and really good vibration yeah. damping, which yeah. I think is important for a, a ski that's designed for that level of carving. Definitely one of the smoothest on-trail skis yeah. that I've been on in, a, in quite some time. Yeah. Now we got a Kessley FX86. Um, we were kind of talking about how to describe this ski earlier, and I kind of came up with the idea that it's like a luxury hatchback. Yeah, and, um, and it's reflected in the fact that we just jumped up $150 right. to $799. So we're moving up from Toyota to Lexus here um, in the luxury hierarchy, um, and you know you definitely get that high-end feel to this ski, um, but in kind of that smaller, more maneuverable package. Um, so interesting construction. They got um, poplar and beech in the center here, um, and then poplar and polonia. Or do I have yeah. that mixed up? You may have that mixed up. Okay, but um, either one. There's there's three different. There's blends of three woods right. in the core, and then that center section is like wrapped in fiber. Right. So they take that center cord here. You can kind of tell by where it's raised, um, and wrap that in fiberglass. And then that uh, wood on the outside uh, is a little bit softer. Um, so it's kind of the opposite in terms of build to the frame technology yeah. where they're putting more emphasis on the outside of the ski and they're uh, channeling it into the middle. So it's going to give it more of a, of a damp feel, um, especially in that longitudinal flex. Um, using their hollow tech, that definitely keeps this thing, you know, light in the front and, you know, pretty good flex overall to this ski. Definitely stiffer in the tail. Um, than the tip, uh, and I kind of would point to that um, navigator as kind of yeah. that similar overall feel where it's Definitely. a little more free ridey from here up and a little bit more race like um, from yeah. midfoot back. In fact, the tails are exceptionally similar. Right. Uh, this uh, FX86 is a, what's this, a 169, 13.9 meter turn radius. Super quick. So again, that short, you know, short turn radius, things pretty quick. Um, that's kind of what led me to that hatchback analogy um, where it's, you know, smaller but still capable and with that really high-end feel. Yeah. Um, you know, and even, I think I skied uh, the longer length, so a 177 perhaps, and, uh, you know, just incredibly quick edge to edge. Yeah. Um, you know, I was a bit strong for the shovel of the ski um, with that hollow tech, but, you know, overall, if you're, you know, that middle size skier, that's going to be just, just the same. I don't fit in hatchbacks. 
<laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> it just makes sense that they're you know going for that higher end feel, but in that smaller end uh, size and shape. Yeah, and it's a uh, you know we've talked a lot about like performance and wider skis trickling down to narrower skis. Yep. The FX line is like the most most free ridey yeah. of all these of any collection of skis. I guess maybe the core would be the one that you know the cores go pretty darn wide too, um, but. Yeah, the FX line has always been designed for kind of like variable snow conditions, adventurous skiers, people that like to do their own thing and, you know, find their own line. So this could be like a really good East Coast touring ski. Yep, definitely. Um, you know, if you noticed it when I had it flipped upside down, there's a skin attachment point on the tail and it's pretty darn lightweight. Yep. You know, it's not like the lightest ski in the world, but you, in terms of like the balance between uphill and downhill performance this is a really good choice for a, for a touring ski yep wooden fiberglass like you said there's a lot you can do with those materials in a ski yeah they i mean they're proven materials so it's it, yeah it's cool to see yep <laughs> um next up is the k2 disruption 82 ti so in my opinion we're kind of moving into like almost a different category of skis with this one yep. this is more of an on-trail carving ski you know, it, it like like when we were comparing it to the Brahma 82, same width, plenty of metal in this ski. This one gets a system binding. Um, now, a quick note on system bindings and price. In this ski, we're moving up to 899. Um, so, we didn't actually have a ski that was 699, but if we did, I would say that's the comparable ski because basically, when you see a system binding. More or less, if it's a 12 or 13-ish DIN range binding, in my opinion, that's adding $200. Yeah. You know, a binding of that quality, of that caliber, is typically around $200. So, you know, as we're going through, we're talking about price, we just jumped up $200 to 899 or we just jumped from the, from the wingman, we jumped up $250 um, to 899 but you got to remember that you're getting a really good binding here yeah. too. Um, so, Disruption 82 Ti, Bob, I know you've skied this quite a bit because I chased you around with a camera for a while when you were skiing it. Um, really, really fun ski. A little bit more rocker in the tips and tails on this ski than like the MTI that we talked about in the front side comparison, um, but still the same same recipe. So you get tight little I-beam, metal along the middle of the ski, dark matter damping in the tips and tails. There's like a polymer that moves yep. around in there. That, Kind of like Vocal's Uvo system that we don't have on any of these skis, but similar concept. You know, they're, they're allowing vibrations yeah. to disperse into something that's inside of the ski, which is really cool. Um, they get a little bit extra sidewall underfoot, and basically the result is a, a really powerful carving ski, but with a touch more compliance. It's, it's almost unfair to say forgiveness, um, but a little bit... Just a little bit better snow feel, I think, than a, mm -hmm. than a lot of carving skis because the metal doesn't extend all the way to the right. edge. So it's not as like jarringly stiff. It's not as not quite as demanding, but it's still like a super high performing ski. If it were tapered at all in the tips and tails, these right. K2s really don't have a lot of tapering no. in them at all. We'll do a little tail comparison here. Um, you know, and I think yeah, you can it's see full, it full on carving ski yeah, shape. Yeah, there's full width right to the right to the very tail, whereas these have that taper to them. So um, you definitely get that stronger finish to the turn out of the K2. Yeah, um, it wants to hold on, and like I said, thank goodness for that little bit of tail rocker. Yeah, um, in those off trail scenarios. Yeah, but still, even with it, this is more demanding off trail. Right. More challenging to ski off trail than a Brahma 82. Oh, you bet. So while could it work as a mogul ski, it could, but it's going to be pretty demanding and yeah. ask for a really skilled skier because there's going to be, you're constantly unweighting the tail yeah. to get it to come around. Otherwise, you just, whew. Yeah. No, it took, <laughs> it took a lot of my effort to get that th thing quickly through the bumps. Yeah. Um, and you're a, and you're a experienced mogul skier. Yeah, so. I like bumps, and so I always try to see what a ski can do in them. Um, but yeah, that tail, you know, that tail shape is on the prohibitive side for yeah. you know quick releasing of 
turns and the bumps. Yep. Um, and then kind of that odd shape in the tip that we see from a lot of the K2 skis these days uh, that is just, it's flat, you know, it's not that it's, um, you know, less splay, but it's just, it just looks flat. a little strange. Yep. <laughs> so it's kind of unnerving to drive that thing into the, into the, you know, front of a bump, but you got to do it. But yeah, super fun ski, very bright. You're not going to lose these on a powder day. Um, <laughs> but yeah. you know, for you know that new that new technology that K2s come out with, like it's great that they're using you know their kind of like you have that MTI with the narrower shape. Um, you know that now we're filtering up. Right. So it's right. a little bit of a different concept, but uh, really cool overall ski. Yeah, powerful carving ski that. You can yeah. ski from bell to bell. Right. Doesn't matter what's piling up on the groomers at the end of the day, that thing's just going to mob right through it. Same with this. Same with that. Yep. Um, this is about as plowing of a ski as you're going to find these days. Yep. Uh, Fisher RC186 GT, kind of a long, silly name, but just a really cool ski. Uh, unchanged for this year, still have that really thick metal in it. So yeah, it's 0 0.8. 0 0.8 millimeters thick as opposed to like a 0.5, which we normally see. Even um, like a lot of race skis are just 0.7. Right, so it's like really thick metal, and it's, uh, it's shown in the weight. These things are pretty heavy. Um, and in order to make it more approachable, they are using the shaped metal, and they're, using, they're taking it out in the tips and in the tails. You can see where that kind of solid pink uh, goes up on the line here, tapers off here. Uh, they're using Baffatex material, which is like a fiber typically found in like competitive sails. Yeah, it's very interesting. Sail racing. I would say it's probably comparable to the Diago fiber that we were seeing in sure. the Tina Star. Yeah. Uh, but they're just using these fibers to keep it stiff, but not have that full heavy metal all the way through. Yeah. Um, but we've just, you know, skied, heard, and seen nothing but good things with these things. Uh, 17 meter turn radius in the 175 here, um, just an absolute monster of a ski. Just, yeah. I mean, 86 underfoot with that metal, uh, this thing goes through it all. And we see people, you know, singing its praises not just on a on a groomer's standpoint, but an all mountain one as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I, it's kind of one of those skis where I just keep waiting it to to take off in popularity and yeah. it doesn't seem like it hasn't earned like Brahma 88 reputation right um, but it's really really good and I think it won ski of the year in ski magazine last year you know uh, there's some flaws to magazine testing that we won't get into right now but it's a really good ski yeah. like nothing a bad ski is never gonna earn that title right. um, and I often think back to my first time skiing this and like I think I was at an on snow demo somewhere and the rep handed it to me and you know in my mind I was like cool another like heavy system ski yeah. um, but it's more playful than you'd expect like yeah. I I just have fond memories of being on that ski in a number of different situations now because I've skied it quite a bit now and just railing turns but then like throwing some quick slashes in, mm -hmm. that it'll do that because of that boff attacks and the way that they shape the tips and tails. Um, so it's heavy, it's demanding, it's a stiff, powerful ski, yeah. but there's like a little bit of fun factor to it, uh, which, which I think is really cool. And then this has an 82, which has the thinner metal in it. And a 78 um, too. Yeah. And a 78. Uh, and I believe this one also comes flat for this year as well as the system. Yep. Um, you know, this is the Fisher Tyrolia, you know, 12 din system binding, which is, again, like you said, give or take $200 to the yeah. ski. Um, and, you know, obviously matches the performance and the color of the ski really well. Yeah, and I think, I mean, for this style ski and this width and this purpose, I like this system yeah. um, because it's a touch lower, like the stand height's not crazy, yeah. uh, which, which I think, I think the, I don't know, I, there's, there's varying opinions on stuff like this, but I personally, when we're up into the 86 width range, I don't really feel like I need any extra rise off the ski, mm -hmm. you, know, you, you got pl plenty of edge there, I'm not really worried about booting out, um, I don't really feel like I need extra leverage, so I, I value like a lower center of gravity. 
Um, and I've skied this with the with the system binding, and it skis great. Yeah, yeah. Just a I mean, glad to see this thing back unchanged. Um, you know, has that same solid yeah thumb category. You can yeah. hear that binding, but the the rest of the ski is really nice. For yeah, it's heavy. I could feel that in my feet. Yeah. Um, and this is a this is another ski. I mean, I think these three skis in a row, starting with that K2 disruption, now ending with this Solomon S Force. They're all 899. They're all similar width ranges, and they're all pretty darn powerful, aggressive carving skis. Mm -hmm. This might be the most aggressive of that group. Yeah, uh, you got two sheets of metal in here. You know, I th it's not as thick as in the RC186 GT. But if we were to do, you know, let's do another quick tail comparison with the with the Fisher. Um, you know, this is a flat squared off tail. It looks like a race ski tail up here. In fact, the whole build of this ski looks and feels like a race yeah. ski. It just happens to be 84 millimeters underfoot. So it'll like mob, like we were saying about the, the disruption and this, you know, talk about a bell to bell carving ski. This thing is right. just fantastic because it doesn't care what you're putting in front of it. Um, two sheets of metal. I think something that's really cool about this ski is Solomon uses what they call edge amplifier, which kind of similar to what we're going to look at in the next ski, um, and, and something that Vocal actually does a lot of is integrating the binding into the build of the ski. So there's kind of like wings on this ski that the binding then slits, slides into, um, and it really does, I think it gives you more direct power transfer and just a really, really strong, yeah. stable feel. Um, this thing, it's the real deal. This thing is, is no joke. Um, you know, it's, it's wide, it's heavy, it's stiff. That tail is not gonna release easily. Right. But if you're looking for just, if, if you wanna like turn heads, you know, if you wanna ski, like at Stowe it would be lift line. Yeah. But like, you know, your, your favorite steep groomed run under the chairlift and just rip some turns and make everybody say, who the heck is that? Right. This is a great ski for yeah. that. I mean, um, deep trenches on this thing. It just moves a lot of snow yeah. for a carving ski. Yeah, Bob, I know, you, you know, before we started, you were kind of singing its praise, and mm -hmm. it's a great ski. Yeah, definitely. Uh, similar experience on this as I had on this wingman where you yeah. just kind of drop in and you start to let it run, and then you kind of find, you know, normally you're kind of trying to find where the radius is and go from there, and, you know, our rep said, this is a race ski build, and I said, okay, and then started going, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> he was right. Yeah. This is a race ski yeah, build. Yeah, before you know it, you're going 55 yeah. miles an hour thinking, right. like, I should probably slow down. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't feel like 55. You know, right. that's the cool thing about skis like this. Stable, confidence-inspiring. Just right. Yeah, no speed limit. You can just go as fast as you want. Yep. Next up, we got a Vocal Deacon 84. So we've kind of danced around this ski a little bit. And we um, just moved up $100 to $9.99. Just, just a dollar shy of $1,000 for this setup here. Keep that dollar in your piggy bank. <laughs> um, so we've kind of danced around this ski. A uh, lot of cool stuff from this, uh, in this build from last year. Uh, it's unchanged. We get a binding. Uh, binding up, update, up, up, yeah, update. I guess the new market yeah, Griffin lower. Um, uh, yeah, and on that low ride plate as opposed to the older ones, which were higher. Uh, but tighten all frame, and still have a 3D ridge. So as opposed, where Kessley here um, has you know that ridge in the middle, but this also has the metal frame around the, around the front and in the back. Um, so the ridge and the frame, so they've really taken all of their technologies and yeah, smashed them into this one ski. It is really cool. I mean, we did a full review of that yeah. ski, and we talked a lot about the, the blending of different construction yeah. elements, and they basically took, like, everything good about, right. about <laughs> the different constructions that they've used over the past, like, five or six years, and then put them all into the Deacon 84. Right. So, like, the old RTM 84 had, you know, just the ridge, and then these sidewalls were very thin. So now we have like that full sidewall thanks to the frame. Um, and that's giving these on-trail carvers, you know, more confidence, I would say, yep. um, in terms of that, uh, that strength and power. Um, also the 3D radius side cut on these, 
which, you know, really in this format allows you to make lots of different turn shapes. Yeah. All in a car, all in a pure carve. Um, so again, no speed limit when you want to open this thing up. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the radius underfoot is pretty long. Um, and then you just shorten it up if you want, and you can carve slalom turns on this thing. Yeah. Uh, so really interesting technology going into this. Um, and then, like you said, with the bindings, um, I think I can, can't really slide it off here all the way, but, um, you know, this plate is built into the ski. So these rails um, along the side of the ski here are built in and hold that binding in there. So every bit of movement that you put into this binding um, gets translated really directly to the ski, which is uh, pretty unique in the, in the system world, um, as opposed to something like this where the plate yeah, is drilled, drilled onto the ski and then the binding slides onto the track. Which is not bad. Nope. You know, like that's how race skis are, are done basically. Right. Uh, but really cool to kind of see some some yeah. innovative designs and yep. in how bindings are, are put onto skis. Yeah. Um, but we just see a lot of good skiers on these around here. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, an interesting comparison to the uh, Kanjo 84, you know, glass frame versus titanal frame. Uh, more on trail shape versus the more free ridey filter down from yep. Mantra and Kendo. Um, you know, this is definitely filtering up from, you know, their, their more Deacon and, and race oriented skis. And there are some similarities between them too. Like, I think they both have a very responsive, energetic yep. feel. I think that's kind of coming from the, the similarities that they share in construction yeah. and, and overall build. But yeah, they do have different different personalities. But like you said, they have two skis that are 84 underfoot, and they just behave, you know, quite differently. And you yep. know, good to have the metal in the in the Deacon here. So last ski that we're going to talk about, you know, we're going least expensive to most expensive. We just kind of shot off the off the map with this ski and hit a a $1,250 price point. That's crazy. Um, but it's a Stokely, and yeah. you know we've had this conversation about Stokely quite a bit in the past. Is you know what what ski did we did we use first? Where were we in the? This was six hundred. So this is like a perfect example of some a conversation that we've had in the past. These two skis are quite similar. Um, the Laser AR is eighty three hundred foot. The Brahma is eighty two hundred foot. They both use metal. They're both designed for like versatile carving. Is the Stokely twice as good as the Blizzard? Right. Objectively, no. No. Right. No. They're, 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 this is a great ski. But if you have, like, unlimited disposable income, is it a little bit better? I think you can find some benefits to right. it. You know, it, it at least has a, a feel that's, that's all Stokely. Um, you know, you get pretty much limitless performance on Stokely skis, and then they have generally a, a smoother feel than mm -hmm. a lot of skis. Um, but really cool ski. You know, they, they some trickle-down construction from their race skis. You know, you have full vertical sidewalls, sandwich construction. There's metal in these skis. Like we talked about in the front side comparison, there's a slit in the metal in the, in the forebody of the ski that's basically allowing a little bit less torsional stiffness, more twisting up here. And actually, I'm surprised how much I was able to do that. Um, and that's designed to get the ski to enter a turn more easily, more fluidly. It's got a more natural feel, just, just unbelievably intuitive. Um, but then you get, you know, all the performance benefits of metal and a, and a flat-ish tail and quite stiff down there in the tail. So it's going to hold an edge really, really well. Um, I would say its shape is like a little bit less versatile. If we did another quick tail comparison to the Brahma, um, but generally skiers that are choosing a ski like the Laser AR and they're shelling out $1,250, generally that's a skier that is okay with that. Yeah. You know, you're probably a pretty accomplished skier. You really care about ski performance and particular aspects of what you're going to do. So you're likely pretty comfortable that if you're going to take this into moguls, you'll have to unweight the tail a little bit, a little bit more skier input. Um, but yeah, just like unbelievably smooth on trail feel. Yeah. 
I'd give it the title of the smoothest ski on this wall. It's not the stiffest, I don't think, in, in longitudinal stiffness. Yeah. Um, but it's right up there among the best edge grip, and I think it, it's if you were to give it a superlative, it's it's the smoothest. Yeah, and we've talked about it before with these other Stokely's and the Stone Riders in specific, that they are more flexible and you're able to access more of that side cut. Yeah. Um, at different speeds, whereas uh, you know a Brahma, you got to get going pretty quick or something like. Uh, this yeah or even like um, art that 86 gt like right. you gotta go pretty fast on that thing yep. if you want to manipulate carving turn right. shape yeah you can access a lot of this side cut yeah really really cool ski uh bob and i are kind of we were having fun with it before we started you could have three of these <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for one, one of those for one laser ar yeah. but you know drastically different animals when we look at anything in the in the 400 hundred dollar range down yeah. here when getting up into the 1250 yeah. dollar range but it's cool to see the whole view of of the spectrum with you know the price and the construction and obviously this one's gonna end up on on this side of the wall. on the high side yep yep um so that's it hopefully you guys enjoyed this this was the first time doing a kind of mid 80 all mountain ski comparison and I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, I really like all these skis, and, and I think what's cool about this video is is these skis, like you said about something over here, you're not going to see it on a magazine cover. Right. Maybe with like the exception of some of those skis down the end, like we saw the RC186 GT on magazine covers last year. This is something that you could see pop up on like a boutique yeah. magazine cover. But other than that, these skis kind of fly under the radar, and they're all really, really good. Yeah. Um, so you know, if you're Looking for a resort all mountain ski? Don't feel like you have to go 90 plus. There's a lot of benefits to, to some of these skis. Yeah, definitely. Um, next up, we're going to do some women's ski comparisons. And then after that, Bob, we don't have too much left. We're going to do twin tips. Um, we're going to do probably some like touring skis as mm -hmm. well. And then maybe we'll get up into powder skis. And then we've got uh, one important category left that I'm sure you guys are waiting for is the, the mid 90. Yeah. All mountain ski where we'll we'll bring in M5 mantras and bona fide ninety sevens and some heavy hitters in the in yeah. the all mountain ski world. Um, so until then, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, we'll be back this Friday with Top Five Friday, and you may see another video in between now and then. Um, so keep an eye out for that, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.